What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Jeff Hardy's first and last match in WWE Bell to Bell by Tap Out Corner. This should be a good one, man. I'm looking forward to this video, man. Uh, appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel, man. I, I definitely wanted to drop a video for you guys before the Super Bowl, man. And also comment down below. I know this is not wrestling related, but it today is the Super Bowl. So comment down below. Let me know who are you guys going for? Are you going for the LA Rams or the Cincinnati Bengals? Who's your team? Who are you rocking with? to win this year's Super Bowl. Uh, I just wanted to get y'all opinion on that. I know it's not wrestling related, but you know, I, I know some of us do watch us some football. So definitely want to get y'all opinion on that before the video starts. So comment, put that down in the comment section below, but this should be a good one. Appreciate all the love and support, man. And uh, I am really looking forward to this video. As soon as I saw that he had dropped it, I was like, oh man, I, I got to check this out. This should definitely be in, uh, entertaining, interesting and, uh, Hey, man, we love us some Jeff Hardy. You know, we love us some Matt Hardy. I know they've, they've been teasing him going to AEW, so that could be a thing. It'll, you know, if it happens, I'm all for it. See what happens in the future. But let's get right into this one, man. Jeffrey Nero Hardy was born in Cameron, North Carolina in 1977. From a young age, Hardy had a love for action, as he took part in extreme sports like football and motocross, but it was wrestling that quickly captured his attention. Jeff grew up watching WWE, with his favorite wrestlers being The Ultimate Warrior, mm. Hulk Hogan, and Shawn Michaels. Jeff's childhood sadly wasn't all good though. He and his brother Matt lost their mother to brain cancer when wow. Jeff was only 9 years old. Damn. This didn't stop them from pursuing their passion though, and the Hardy brothers <laughs> began wrestling in their backyard and even held their own shows. As they grew up, the Hardys learned more and more and started wrestling for small companies around their area. Thanks to a combination of their hard work, some people they knew, a bit of luck, and a little lying, Jeff Hardy was given a huge opportunity. WWE was hosting a show in Ohio and they needed an opponent for Razor Ramon. Ramon's original opponent backed out on short notice and a 16 year old Jeff Hardy was wow. asked to play. Hardy agreed but claimed he was 18. Under the impression that he was an adult, WWE let Jeff Hardy compete, leading to Hardy's first WWE match. Wow, so he lied. He lied to get into get into his first WWE match, man. That's <laughs> that's crazy, bro. That's that's when you know the passion is real. You're willing to lie about your age because you know this is an opportunity you may not get again. So the passion is is real, man. You could tell his love for wrestling has it hasn't died, man, and I love to see it from Matt and Jeff, actually. In the main event of Raw, Jeff Hardy, wrestling under the name Keith Davis, took on future Hall of Famer Razor Ramon. The match began with Razor kicking Hardy in the gut and backing him into the corner. Ramon then whipped Hardy across the ring, and while Jeff tried to make a comeback, the charismatic enigma was no match for the bad guy's strength. Razor Ramon then started stretching the young Hardy and wasn't taking the match too seriously. Razor even lifted Jeff by his pants and started attacking him in the corner. An elbow to the face sent Hardy back to the mat, and the bad guy followed that up by slamming his opponent into the turnbuckle. Jeff's lifeless body was then hoisted up to the top and sent crashing down with a belly-to-back suplex. Finally, Ramon signaled for the Razor's Edge and planted the 16-year-old wrestler on the canvas and ended the match. The backstory of how Jeff Hardy got put into this match is a lot more interesting than the match itself. Mm. It was a squash, which yeah. can be fun, but this is just dull. There was a lot of time spent with Razor Ramon just taunting Jeff Hardy, and it wasn't that interesting. But imagine telling fans in 1994 that this Keith Davis guy would eventually become one of the most popular WWE mm -hmm. wrestlers of all time. There's no denying it. Jeff, Jeff and Matt, the Hardys, they, they are the most popular tag team in wrestling history. And Jeff is one of the most popular wrestlers to not really be the main eventer like he should have been. He had his run with the WWE Championship, but we all know Jeff is a, he should have been more of a main eventer because the crowd has always loved him. That's the crazy thing. He is always, out of the Hardys, out of the Hardy brothers, Jeff has always been like a lot more the fan favorite. People love Matt, but and Matt really started getting over with his uh with his delete gimmick, you know what I'm saying? His his broken gimmick that really took him to new heights, you know what I'm saying? But we all know Jeff was a lot of people's fan favorites, man. He was anytime he came out, the crowd cheered. Anytime. 
Didn't matter if he had a championship or not, the crowd cheered. We got a little ways to go before that, however. After his WWE debut, Jeff Hardy would spend the next few years doing more of the same. He was used as an enhancement talent yep. and would lose to more established stars. Jeff's brother Matt was doing a very similar thing at the time as well. It wouldn't be until 1996 that the Hardys would start tagging together in WWE. They still lost most of the time and were used to make other people look good. Finally, after about five years, both Jeff and Matt would be given a chance. In 1999, the brothers were given a new look, as well as a manager, former Freebird member. Hey, man. <laughs> Who remember the Hardys look from this era with the dye hair, the, the long hair, bro? <laughs> Who remember? This is, this is the era right here, man. This is the Hardy boy essence right here. This was just that fashion of punk rocker, bro. Michael Hayes. The Hardys finally started to pick up some victories and began an iconic rivalry with a group called The Brew, mm -hmm. which consisted of Edge, Christian, and Gangrel. Things got even better when the Hardys captured the tag team titles by defeating the Acolytes in July 1999. While they dropped the belts back to Bradshaw and Farouk a month later, it was an encouraging start. Eventually, Jeff and Matt got rid of Michael Hayes and joined forces with their former enemy, Gangrel, and they started calling themselves- I ain't gonna lie to you. Brute, they used to scare me as kids. Gangrel, they used to legitimately scare the piss out of me, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. As a kid, watching them rise up, I don't know what's happening with my camera. Come on, come on. There we go. All right, there we go. We're back. Uh, as a kid, watching them rise up through the fire with the blood and the faint, I used to be terrified of them. But that that's how it worked. It worked. I'm like, bro, we got some real vampires out here wrestling. <laughs> the new group. It was a short-lived group though, as the Hardys had their eyes on someone else to guide their careers. They soon engaged in a classic feud with mm. Edge and Christian over the managerial services of Terry Reynolds. The Hardys came out on the winning side of that battle and continued dominating the tag team division, now as Terry by their side. That was until she turned on Jeff and Matt and joined Edge and Christian. It was probably for the best, as this opened the door for Lita to join the Hardys, mm -hmm. and together they became known as Team, Team Extreme. Extreme. Yeah. Now with Lita by their side, the Hardys continued to put on spectacular matches with stellar showings at SummerSlam 2000, yep. and the first ever TLC match, and in can we just say the first ever TLC match will be one of it, one of my favorite tag team matches of all time. <laughs> Seeing everything happen like that, you just as a kid, you're just like, oh my god, this is insane. Loved it. An all-time classic at WrestleMania 17. Yep, in Houston. Edwin Christian and Ooh. the Dudley Boys. During these brutal matches, Jeff became increasingly known for his high-risk moves. Yep. And fans loved him because of it. Yes. After spending about two years teaming with his brother, Jeff was given a shot as a singles wrestler in 2001. He quickly became a fan favorite, mm -hmm. as well as a title holder, when he defeated Triple H for the Intercontinental Championship. Unfortunately, though, he lost it right back to the game just a few days later. Which I, I, I hate the 50-50 booking. And it was always with the, the uh, I guess you could say, the talent that were, you know, were good at politicking in the back. I, I just, 50-50 booking like that, is, it's, it, it destroys a person's momentum. I hate it. I do hate that so much. Luckily, Jeff Hardy picked himself up and captured the hardcore title for Mike Awesome and battled Rob Van Dam in a series of memorable matches. During all of this, Jeff and Matt were still a tag team, but signs of tension began to mm -hmm. appear. This caused them to fight each other at Vengeance 2001 with Lita as the guest referee. Jeff picked up the win after hitting the Swanton Bomb, but this storyline was poorly received by fans. WWE ended up dropping it and Team Extreme was back together. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for the brothers, their next opponent was the next big thing, mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar, who had recently debuted. Yeah. Things didn't go so well for the two as Brock dominated the majority of the feud, yep. including beating them in a match where Lesnar had Paul Heyman as his tag team partner. After the storyline wrapped up, it was time for the Hardys to officially split. Matt became part of the SmackDown roster with matches on Raw. One of the defining moments of Hardy's career, though, was when he took on The Undertaker in a ladder. This was, I ain't gonna lie to you, a fantastic moment for Jeff. And the fact that they had a fantastic match on Raw and they were building up the story as could Jeff be the one to take down The Undertaker and take the championship from him. And even in defeat, The Undertaker's still showing him, like, in character, like, yo, you, you're you a tough one, bro. You're, you're a tough son of a bitch, man. Like, that was a, a cool moment for Jeff, man. I remember watching that, and I thought that was dope. That was a fantastic match. Jeff, even though he lost, the crowd was behind him, 
And even though Undertaker had to show respect, I thought Their that match was cool. For the WWE title, Jeff showed a ton of heart and yeah. came close to capturing the championship. Undertaker did retain his title, but Jeff Hardy had earned the dead man's respect right, yeah. in an all-time classic Raw moment. Mm -hmm. Things were looking pretty good for Jeff, but in January 2003, we would see Hardy become a bad guy. He attacked Rob Van Dam and Shawn Michaels, but this run as a villain only lasted about a month before Hardy was back to being a good guy again. Sadly though, in April 2003, Jeff Hardy was released from his WWE contract. The reasons given were no showing events, drug use, and mm -hmm. that Jeff refused to go to rehab. Hardy would spend the next few years competing on the independent scene and later joining an upstart wrestling company called oh, TNA. TNA yeah. Unfortunately, controversy continued to follow Jeff as he no shown a couple of TNA events and was suspended and eventually released in 2006. While the TNA door was shut, the WWE's door was open once again. And in August 2006, Jeff Hardy returned to the company. He began feuding with the Intercontinental Champion, Johnny Nitro, and while things didn't work out at first, Jeff did eventually defeat Nitro and win the title. This rivalry evolved into a tag team feud mm -hmm. as Nitro got his partner, Joey Mercury, involved, while Hardy reunited with his brother, Matt. The teams faced off several times between 2006 and 2007, with the Hardys coming out on top in most of their matches. No, they had a nice tag team feud. I believe uh, this was on SmackDown or whatnot. Uh... SmackDown had a nice tag team division around this time. I, I can't say now, but back then, SmackDown had a pretty solid tag team. Division. Unfortunately, Jeff Hardy's singles career would suffer as he lost the Intercontinental title to Omaga mm -hmm. in February 2007. But things quickly turned around for Jeff when he and Matt defeated four other teams to become the World Tag Team Champions. Their main rivalry as champions was with Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. The Hardys defeated the two on a couple of occasions, only to lose the titles to them on Raw in June 2007. While the Hardys were still together, Jeff Hardy began to focus again on his singles career. He reignited his rivalry with Umaga, who was still Intercontinental Champion. This time, Hardy defeated the Samoan Bulldozer and once again became IC Champion. But this is only the start of something bigger for Jeff Hardy. Mm -hmm. He began being put in bigger matches and didn't crumble in defeat. This earned him a number one contenders match for the WWE title at the Armageddon pay-per-view. Jeff Hardy's opponent was Triple H, and while the odds were not in Jeff's favor, he pulled off a big upset and defeated the game. This is one of those things where seeing that happen was fantastic because you, you you can start seeing WWE start is is going with Jeff is trying to actually put him in that main event spotlight that we always wanted to see him in. So it was cool for him to gain that momentum and uh, actually see it happen before your eyes. This meant that Jeff would face the WWE champion Randy Orton at the 2008 Royal Rumble for the title. The Viper decided to make it personal and brutally attack Matt Hardy. Mm -hmm. Sadly, Jeff Hardy was unable to get his revenge and lost to Orton at the Rumble. To make matters worse, a couple of months later, Jeff Hardy not only lost the Intercontinental Championship, but would also be suspended for 60 days due to him failing a drug test. It seemed like Jeff Hardy's career had nosedived, and it did. But like a phoenix, Jeff came back stronger he always, than ever. He always Once would find a way to come back. The charismatic Enigma feuded with his former rival, Umaga, and defeated him in an awesome false count anywhere. That was a fantastic Jeff match. Then set to SmackDown, where he'd be a contender for the WWE Championship. For the rest of 2008, Hardy would try and try to win the title, but came up short each and every time. Mm -hmm. It seemed like Jeff Hardy was just never meant to be a world champion. At the 2008 Armageddon pay-per-view, Hardy got one more shot at the WWE title. He was part of a triple threat match involving the champion, Edge, and Triple H, and mm -hmm. then it finally happened. Yep. Jeff hit the Swanton Bomb, got the 1-2-3, yep. and won. Jeff that was a momentous occasion. JR calling that match when he finally won it. The crowd going crazy. He was a fan favorite. People, they had been teasing it for so long. He's this close to getting it. And then he finally does. Man, bro. I was like, yo, this is, this is it. This is what we wanted to see. Our childhood, like, favorite finally getting to the, you know, to the top of the mountain, achieving the WWE Championship. Hardy had finally made it to the top and became WWE Champion. It was a fantastic moment and yep. solidified Jeff Hardy as a top star. Yep. Hardy's first title offense was against the former champion Edge at the 2009 Royal Rumble. During the match, Matt Hardy came out to help his brother, only for Matt to shockingly betray Jeff and mm -hmm. cost him the title. After many personal attacks, Jeff Hardy finally agreed to fight his brother. The Hardys fought each other at WrestleMania 25, yep. where Jeff Hardy actually lost. Matt Hardy would also defeat him in a stretcher match as well. 
finally, Jeff got his revenge at Backlash when he defeated Matt in an I Quit match. Mm -hmm. With that rivalry behind him, Jeff was right back. I ain't gonna lie to you, I did enjoy that feud. The, that, that feud that they had, I was definitely enjoying it. In the title scene, on an episode of SmackDown, he defeated three other men to become the number one contender for Edge's World Heavyweight Championship. The two longtime rivals squared off at Judgment Day, but interference from Matt Hardy cost Jeff his golden opportunity. Jeff Hardy thankfully got one more shot at Extreme Rules and finally picked up the big victory mm. and became World Heavyweight Champion. However, that was a that was a pretty cool moment until I mean it was all of it was entertaining, but it was a cool moment because oh man he 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 got another championship, another big championship. All right, this is this is awesome, man. This is this is what we want to see. And then for this title reign was very short. Yeah. CM Punk used his money in the bank contract and defeated Jeff to mm -hmm. win the world title. Yeah. As you've learned, Jeff Hardy is resilient, and Hardy picked himself up and defeated CM Punk at Night of Champions to win back the gold. For whatever. Which was once again, it's like I've said this earlier. The the fifty fifty booking man is like you have them win, they have them lose, and I get it because of the the money in the bank stipulation to have them win to once again have them lose right back. And like like he never really had like a stable title reign, something that we can l truly remember. We remember when he won it, but we don't really have that that lengthy title reign that I think Jeff ultimately deserved. For whatever reason, Jeff Hardy World Championships do not mix. At the next pay per view, yep. SummerSlam. CM Punk defeated Hardy, and Jeff lost the belt again. Yeah. Hardy got his rematch on the following episode of SmackDown in a steel cage match. The fight had a special stipulation that the loser would leave WWE. In a heartbreaking moment, Jeff lost the match and was forced to say goodbye. In real life, the reason for this was to give Hardy time off to heal his body. However, like in the storyline, Jeff Hardy really did not have a contract with WWE. This resulted in Hardy returning to TNA in 2010. For seven years, Jeff was one of the top stars in the company, mm -hmm. winning their world title on three different occasions and often being featured in major storylines. Which is one of those things where it's like, they could have did that at WWE, but they chose not to. And also, he was dealing with a lot of stuff personally as well. So it was just, it was a combination of him dealing with the things he was dealing with personally and WWE like giving what the fans wanted, but just enough to take it away, kind of. Of course, it wasn't all highlights for the charismatic Enigma, as he continued to battle drug and alcohol issues mm -hmm. and infamously ruined the main event of Victory Road 2011. TNA didn't give up on him though, and Jeff eventually reunited with his brother and later feuded with them when Matt became Broken, broken Matt Hardy. Yep. Both Jeff and Matt's TNA contracts eventually expired in early 2017. Just like the last time, WWE welcomed Jeff and his brother back, and they made a surprise return at WrestleMania 33. Which was a fantastic return. Crowd went crazy. I went crazy. I thought it was so cool. They competed against three other teams for the Raw Tag Team Championship. It was also a ladder match, so the Hardys were legally required to win. Mm -hmm. Jeff and Matt continued to ride the momentum for the next few months, defending and retaining their titles on several occasions. However, all championship reigns come to an end, and at Extreme Rules, so did the Hardys. Afterward, Jeff Hardy explored his singles career and even became the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship, but was unsuccessful in his title match. Sadly, Jeff Hardy would suffer a shoulder injury and needed several months off to recover. The charismatic Enigma finally returned in April 2018 and soon defeated the United States champion, Jinder Mahal, and won the title. Hardy had a solid run at the belt, holding it for exactly 90 days. He lost the U.S. championship to Shinsuke Nakamura, Sheesh. and to throw salt into the wound, Randy Orton came out afterward and low-blowed Hardy. The Viper and the Charismatic Enigma would feud for the next couple of months. They had a nice feud, too. I was enjoying that. I'm not gonna lie. Well, Hardy, he has some good feuds. It's just, you, I don't know. It's like WWE, ah, man, I can't really put my finger on it. I think the consensus of this entire video for me is just how WWE would push, then de-push, push, de-push. De and some of it, it falls on WWE's creative, and some of it does fall on uh, Jeff Hardy himself. But that's always, that's his consensus of his career. Always a fan favorite. Throughout his entire career, always a fan favorite, always got a good pop, but the push and de-push every time. He's the one person I could say that no matter how many times he's gotten de-pushed, fans still loved him as if he was the top guy. That's hard to really do because if nine times if they de-push you, that can ruin your momentum, ruin your interaction with crowds because 
people tend to not care, but they've always cared about Jeff. That's the one thing I can say. Ultimately leading to a Hell in a Cell match that Jeff Hardy lost. Yeah. The next few months would be pretty uneventful for Jeff. He would compete in big matches like the World Cup Tournament, the Royal Rumble, and the Elimination Chamber, but didn't win any of them. Yep. However, in February 2019, Matt Hardy made his WWE return and reunited with Jeff. Then, in April, the Hardy brothers defeated the Usos to win the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. As we know, however, Jeff Hardy has the worst luck with title reigns. 21 days after winning the tag team belts, the Hardys had to vacate them due to Jeff getting injured. It would be almost an entire year before fans saw Jeff Hardy again. In March 2020, Jeff made his return on SmackDown, but unfortunately, the pandemic era mm -hmm. had just begun. Things got back on track when Hardy began a feud with Sheamus. It started when the Celtic Warrior mocked Jeff for his history of addiction. Which was actually not bad. It was a That was a highlight segment of the pandemic era. Nice little feud they had. Problems. This ultimately led to, ironically, a bar fight, which Jeff Hardy won. Hardy's next feud was with the Intercontinental Champion, AJ Styles, after Jeff issued a challenge to AJ. A week later, Jeff Hardy beat Styles and was once again IC Champion. Jeff would rather, ironically, lose the belt in a ladder match involving AJ Styles and Sami Zayn. Soon after, Jeff Hardy would be sent to Raw as part of the 2020 draft. He began a feud with Elias that ran through the rest of the year that Hardy more or less won. Mm -hmm. In 2021, while Jeff was still popular with fans, he began losing quite a bit. It was mainly used to put over newer yeah. stars like Damian Priest and Karrion Cross. Ironically, this is exactly what Jeff Hardy was doing as a teenager. Even though that first match he did beat Karrion Cross, which was like, uh, if you're going to have him as the guy to put over people, I don't know why you have him beat Karrion Cross. On his first time coming to Monday Night Raw, but that's neither here nor there. In the mid 90s. In October, Jeff got a new start when he was moved over to SmackDown. Things started out pretty good for Jeff Hardy, as he won his first two matches on the brand and was part of Team SmackDown at Survivor Series. Everything seemed to be going fine, but little did we know that Jeff Hardy was about to leave WWE. Yep. Yep, man. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I was hoping they were gonna give uh, Jeff the win there. He, the, he was the crowd favorite at Survivor Series. I was hoping they was going to do it, but they didn't do it. So. On the November 26, 2021 episode of SmackDown, Jeff Hardy would compete in his final two WWE matches. The first match of the night was a tag team contest, which saw Hardy and Drew McIntyre defeat Happy Corbin and Mad Cat Moss. The charismatic enigma even got the pin for his team. Later that night, an 18-man battle royal was set up, with the winner becoming the number one contender for the Universal Championship. Jeff Hardy was one of the participants, and not even he knew that this would be his last WWE match. Before the Battle Royal actually got started, Jeff's former tag team partner, Drew McIntyre, ran into the ring with his sword. Luckily, all it took was a commercial break, and when we came back, McIntyre was gone. Now that the Battle Royal was underway, Jeff Hardy's first target was Mad Cat Moss. Jeff, who had changed his attire and gotten rid of his face paint, tried to eliminate Moss, but got attacked from behind by Rich Holland. Hardy then formed an alliance with Mansoor, but Holland overpowered both of them. After recovering, Jeff saw an opportunity and took it, and made the first elimination by pushing Jinder Mahal out of the ring. There was no rest for Jeff, as Shanky started shoving his massive boot into Hardy's throat. The charismatic enigma stayed close to the ground until he found an opportunity to get back at Shanky. Jeff wasn't able to do much damage though, as Madcap Moss returned and began attacking Hardy. Moss even tried to eliminate Jeff, but thanks to the chaos, Jeff Hardy was able to get away. Hardy then laid low for a bit, but when he got to his feet, his old rival, Sheamus, went after him. In a moment of pure luck, the Celtic warrior abruptly left Jeff Hardy and focused his attention on someone else. Jeff Hardy went back to the ground and it became clear that he was hurt, likely due to having wrestled already. However, after returning from a commercial break, Jeff Hardy was not only on his feet, but he was inches away from eliminating Sheamus. Unfortunately, the Celtic Warrior got the better of Jeff and Hardy fell back onto the mat. Unfortunately, Happy Corbin saw that Jeff was wounded and decided to try and eliminate him. Even though he was hurt, Jeff managed to stun Corbin just long enough to get back inside the ring. Hardy tried to go on the offensive and take out Ricochet, but that didn't go too well. With the Battle Royal coming to an end, the action started getting more intense, but Jeff Hardy couldn't do much. Realizing that it was do or die, Jeff Hardy had a burst of adrenaline and ambushed Happy Corbin. Not gonna lie to you, I definitely would have went with Jeff Hardy being the person to potentially go for the Universal Championship because it's Jeff Hardy, man. He's a fan favorite. He's a fan favorite. And I know, you know, of course we wouldn't believe that he would win, obviously, but I think it would have been a, a very interesting match. That's just my personal opinion. And Sheamus. 
Hardy hits Sheamus with a whisper in the wind and Corbin with a twist of fate. Corbin then suddenly pulled a fast one and eliminated Sheamus, which allowed Jeff to eliminate Happy, and it appeared he won the Battle Royal. As Jeff Hardy was celebrating, Sami mm -hmm. Zayn, who hadn't been eliminated, ran in and knocked Jeff out of the ring. Kind of a disappointing way to end the match, yeah. but considering the way the storyline went with Sami Zayn, I think it worked fine. Talking about Jeff Hardy's last match, though, it made sense that Hardy didn't do much, considering he had already wrestled, but I think it would have been better if he played a more active role. Mm -hmm. The way the match was played out, Jeff Hardy just felt like another body in the ring, yeah. and I was honestly surprised that he lasted till the very end. The commentators didn't even acknowledge when Jeff Hardy eliminated Jinder Mahal, which only adds to this feeling that Hardy wasn't really a big part of the Battle Royal. At the very least, it was cool that Jeff Hardy had his last match in front of his home state of North Carolina. About a week after his match on SmackDown, Jeff Hardy would wrestle at a non-televised WWE event in Texas. Before I go on, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't this be Jeff Hardy's last match? Fair point, but on Bell to Bell, we only look at wrestlers' matches on TV. With that cleared up, Hardy was wrestling a 3 on 3 tag team match at the Texas show. In a very bizarre moment, Jeff Hardy just randomly left the ring and started walking through the crowd. This wasn't part of the show, and it made people wonder if Hardy was under the influence. Mm -hmm. So far, there hasn't been anything to suggest that Jeff was, but there still isn't any explanation why he up and left the match. Either way, WWE sent Jeff Hardy home following the incident, and shortly thereafter, they would release him from his contract. Mm -hmm. As of right now, Jeff Hardy is under a no-compete clause, which will expire in March 2022. While we wait for that, check out the first and last matches of the man who puts the high in high- Hey, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, this video was dope. Hey, uh, I love me some Jeff Hardy, man, when it comes to what he's done for the business. He's been wrestling since he was a teen, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is something that he knew this is what he wanted to do for a living, and he's been doing it for so long at a, at a high level, too. He's had his problems, he had his issues like anybody else would, but the fact that he's always been able to overcome it and come back strong... It's a testament to his will and his passion and love for wrestling. So I know Matt Hardy has been teasing some things about, you know, him coming to AEW. If anything, I wouldn't have a problem with it. One more, one more go at it in AEW with them, at, you know, as a tag team one more time. And maybe they can definitely put over some younger tag team talent as well. I would love to see him in AEW and I think it will happen once his uh his non compete clause ends yeah i think that's gonna be a beautiful moment to see the hardy boys one more time one more run but this time in aew i think that would be pretty cool so comment down below let me know man if you guys enjoyed this video if you want me to check out some more of his bell to bell series i see he got one with rvd i may have to check that one out let me know if you guys enjoyed this i enjoyed that this was informative dope and it just made me appreciate what jeff had did well, what jeff has done in the wrestling business all these years it made me appreciate him even more but i appreciate all love and support road to sandy k appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace